Hello. In this screencast, we're going to imagine you've been given the task of maintaining a project. The project has already been created, it's on GitHub, and your task is now to continue working on it, either to fix bugs or to provide new features or something similar. So the project is on GitHub, in this case it's the pet store Java E7, Antonio Goncalves, the application is there. Um, you can find it github.com, agonco, agonco application, pet store E7. Now you click on this little button here, which copies the URL to the clipboard, and then you switch to NetBeans. You choose team and git and clone, and then you, you control V and you paste it in there. And now you give some name, so we call it Antonio. Um, this is the folder on disk into which the project will be checked out. We can choose a branch of which there is one, so we just choose that one. And then the checkout starts into the folder we specified. A project will be created, and also we give the option of also seeing it in the favorites window. So here is the favorites window. And we can see, so this is not one from before, so I'm just going to remove this one from the favorites window. So here is the complete project structure as it is um, checked in. However, here is the NetBeans view on it. You can see here there's an other sources and there's modules. And right now it's unloadable because we need to do a build. So we choose build and we can see in the output window that the build starts, which means that all the jars that are defined in the pump file are downloaded from the repository. Here's the pump file. You can already take a look. You can see there's a graph that we can take a look at. Okay. In the meantime, what's happened is that all the dependencies have been retrieved from the repository and are now available in my local Maven repo. I can see the graph. Now here's the graph. All the, all the checking out has been done. It's been completed. The tests. Okay, there are some problems in the tests, but that's fine. We don't need that for what we want to do. But some of the tests um, are throwing problems. We can actually exclude the tests. So if we go to the options window and we go to Java and Maven, we can say here, skip tests for any build executions not directly not directly related to testing. So we say, okay, right click it and do the build again. In the meantime, we can take a look at the dependency graph. So here are clusters of dependencies that relate to each other. We can zoom in, we can zoom to fit or the model. So the, the build has succeeded. That's the first important information here. Here is the dependency graph and we can zoom in to items and see the dependencies that relate to a particular item here. So here you can see a section. So the application depends on Java E7. And here is another dependency that relates to that. We can move around and see other dependencies here and see how they relate to each other. And what you can also do is exclude. So if you choose exclude, it means that an exclusion dependency will be added into the palm file. So we can visually remove dependencies um, from the palm file by using this graph to do so. So this already gives us an, a, some perspective on the application. So we zoom out a bit and try and see everything. So zoom to fit shows us everything. We can also see different layouts. So for example, a hierarchical layout, um, and we can zoom into that. So zoom into fit here, or we can see a, a horizontal layout, for example and zoom into that. So we can zoom into particular items that we've selected. But the default layout is pretty good. It gives us an all-round perspective on what's going on in the application. So select an item and you can see the flow from one dependency to the next. And when you zoom to fit, it means that you can see all the items around it more closely. You can see here that there's a problem you can see there's a warning here um, that this particular dependency is overridden by the 1.1.1 version, which is needed by another dependency. So you can even see problems in the code um, that are going to be caused by conflicting dependencies. 
Um, in addition, you can see the effective palm, so you can see where the various items in the palm come from. So this comes from Archelion. Now that's really hand handy to know. Um, so here, and, and this comes from shrink wrap. So you can see actually where each of the dependencies, where they come from in your application structure. Uh, and of course, within the palm file itself, you can use um, code completion. So right now, uh, the Maven repository is being polled for information. And when that's been done, you can get the, the correct version numbers via code completion. So now you can see that index indexing has started to enable this functionality to be used. And when that's been done, um, then we'll be able to see uh, which versions are available and we can enter them here via doing control space. But now here, this indexing has started. When that's been completed, um, you'll see that functionality. In the meantime, what we can do is um, take a look at what find bugs will say about this application. So we do source and inspect, and I have built in, this is just part of NetBeans, uh, find bugs. I can point to a particular, uh, I can say all projects, but we say the current project, we only have one, and then we start the inspection. So find bugs, of course, is, an, is a free and open source project. And it's been integrated into NetBeans such that we can see any problems. Aha! Uh -huh. What does FindBug say about this? So, okay, so about serializable, there are problems. And what else do we find here? Okay, a lot, a lot of the serializable standards are not have not been complied with. Maybe not so important, but it's good to know where these problems are found. Okay, so a non-transient, non-serializable. So let's we can jump from here to where the problem is found. So there it is, and then you can see the problem as well. Non-transient, non-serializable instance of the field cart items. So very quickly we can find all of these instances of find bugs problems, or we can sort these by the categories from find bugs. So these are the bad practice items, these are these are going to impact the performance. So these are going to probably be of higher value to fix than the other items could be refracted into a name static in a class. So we can jump into that particular item. So there's quite a few instances of that. So here we can see um, these instances. And we can convert anonymous to member. So we can do that directly in, in our code. So internationalization problems can be identified, malicious code. So a lot of different uh, problems can be identified via the external tool find bugs which is integrated into NetBeans. Uh, something else that is um, interesting to take a look at is that we can spend some time looking at uh, code metrics. If we browse, um, well, let's create a new configuration and so here are the predefined ones. So we create a new one, we manage it and we will call it code metrics. Because when you're taking over someone else's project, it really helps to um, see where the long pieces of code are found. So where are the very complex methods? Um, so let's see, Java code metrics. So we take this entire category here. Now what does this include? An anonymous class has too many methods. So we can set a method limit. So we can say, so we want to be notified if there's an anonymous class which has more than, say, four methods. That could be a problematic area. Or a class has too many constructors, and we can define what that means. So we can, class is too coupled, class is too complex. We can define what complexity limit is. So you can see, report classes whose sacramentic complexity exceeds the configured limit. The complexity of a class is computed as a sum of complexities of its methods. So quite a bit of analysis can be done here. Method is too complex, um, too deep nesting. So a nice thing to do when you're just getting started taking over someone's code is, is exactly this. So we choose code metrics, and we do inspect, and we do it over the current project. And let's see what we get from this analysis. Okay, so there are 34 instances. So one with classes too many methods. 
So this could be a, a problematic area that we might need to look at. Doesn't mean that there's a bug here, but it could be a problem. So we hop in here, and we see here this plus has 22 methods. Okay, so it's good to be aware of this class because um, this could be a, a code smell. Could be, it doesn't have to be, but uh, class has too many fields. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, customer has too many fields. So you can see here that here there are 11 fields. You know, not again, not a problem necessarily, but um, with multiple negations. So here's something else that we could take a quick look at. At some of these. So credit card. So there we go. So here is an area. Um, method two train has too many negations. Uh, and we've said that, uh, that there was a limit and it's exceeded the limit. So this is probably something we want, might want to look at um, and maybe construct this piece of code or more um, gracefully or more subtly. Um, with multiple return points, that's also very useful to know. Could be an indication of a problem somewhere. So uh, we can put our cursor on string, which is the return type, and now we can see all of the um, return points highlighted. You can always do that. You put your cursor on the return type in the uh, in the statement, in the declaration of the method, and then you can see all the return types. So here you can see that there's there are three return points. Um, so here again, three. So we put the cursor there on the modifier. And then we can see all the return types, um, all the return points of that return type. So this kind of inspection can also be very useful. It can pick up some code smells. And a final inspection we want to do is take a look at what the impact of Java 8 might be on this application. So we're going to say we'll set the binary format to 1.8. And then we're going to go to source and um, this time not to source and inspect because we're going to potentially get um, actual changes in our code made. So we're not going to do a simple inspection. Instead of that, we're going to say we want to migrate our code to JDK 8. So that's the difference between this one. This is source and inspect. So here you'll just get advice, you'll just get tips um, in, in, the, um, in the left margin. But, but what we're now going to do is actual refactoring, actual replacement of our code. So for that, you can choose Refactor, Inspect, and Transform, or right-click and choose Inspect and Transform. And you can see that there are predefined inspections that are done. So this is a grouping of smaller inspections. So migrate to JDK 8, what does that mean? So when you look in here, you can see it means that we'll be doing a check for um, the, the possibility of replacing the imperative style loop with functional operations, so the streams API, and secondly, a check is done for places where Lambda expressions could be used. So that's migration to JDK 8. So we start the inspection. OK, so here is a usage of a functional operation could be applied here. And here's another one. So you can see here the JDK 6 for loop could be replaced with a, a streams API functional operation. So we can do these refactorings both here at the same time. Or we can do them one by one after carefully looking at it. So this would be the impact functional operation. So here you can see the Lambda expression. And if you put the cursor in the Lambda operator and you do control, uh, you do out enter here, you do out enter, you can see use explicit parameter type. So now you can actually see what the type is. And here you can see in the lower pane here, the uh, before and after of the refactoring that you're doing. Do control Z and return it to where it was. So out enter, um, and you can decide to go back to the anonymous inner class or to the way it was before. Um, and here's the streams API, and control Z brings you back to where things were in the beginning. Again, in this case as well, here we have a for loop. We can do this specific inspection. And now we get quite a long statement, so we can clean it up a bit, out enter. We say use block as a lambda's body. So this is a lot more readable now. And here again, we can do the same thing, out enter, use block, or we could say use explicit parameter type. So use block as a parameter's body. So this becomes a bit more readable. So we've now done various inspections, and we can see that the Mabel processing is completed. So the earlier 
point made was that for any of the dependencies, so let's see where are some dependencies. So here's, here's a version. So we can do control space, and now we can see um, the versions available for a particular dependency by, by means of code completion, control space, and the artifact ID. So whenever you use control space in the palm file, you get support as well, in addition to the graph and the effect of palm um, that, what, that was shown before. So in short, when you're getting started maintaining someone else's code, it's very nice to do the inspections that you've seen here, and the inspections include uh, find bugs and uh, JDK8 and also um, code metrics. These are some basic inspections that you can perform to see where the problems might be in the code, where the code smells might be. And when you're using Maven, you have a lot of functionalities such as the dependency um, support in this graph, including the ex exclusion possibility. And you can also see when that, where there are dependency problems between um, the dependencies declared in the palm file, as well as, of course, as you saw, the effect of palm, you can see immediately within, within NetBeans. All the commands you run on the project, build, clean and build, build with dependencies, these are nothing more than goals from your palm file. So if you go to the actions here, you can see build project means install, clean project means clean. So these are just Maven goals and you can add your own custom ones and completely integrate your your maven setup with your netbeans project at the end of the day you'll have a plain old maven project because nothing has been added to make this project a netbeans project netbeans knew that you had a palm file and therefore knew that this is a maven project and opened it and everything that you now do is um is pure pure uh, maven so what you run here inside NetBeans when you do a Maven build is the same as what you would do on the command line. With that, you have a basic overview of tools and techniques you can use when getting started maintaining someone else's code. Have fun with NetBeans, with Maven, with GitHub, and with all of these different code metric and analysis tools.